Hello, this is the Building with Primitives, the Old Temple tutorial. Uh, I am going to start by setting my project folder, File, Set Project, and I am going to refer to the same folder that we got from the first part of this demo, and just highlight that folder and click Set. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to construct a classic temple using primitive objects. You're going to learn how to create 3D primitive objects and manipulate them, move and rotate, um, and scale using your mouse and numeric, duplicate objects, and uh, change your view and viewing panels, <clears throat> and undo in this lesson. Um, So I'm going to just click a new scene just in case, file new scene, and do not save the scene, uh, I mean unless you want to. Um, and I'm going to create a t basic temple from primitive objects. So that's just, primitive objects just means NURBS primitives and polygon primitives. So we're going to start with the base. <coughs> Um, and if you're not already on the modeling menu set, make sure that you've got the modeling menu set selected. Uh, unless otherwise indicated, the directions in this lesson for making menu selections assume you've already is selected the modeling menu set. Uh, you should ensure that interactive creation uh, is off by selecting Create Polygon Primitives, Interactive Creation, and make sure that that's off. And when you've got that off, go to Create Polygon Primitives Cylinder Option Box. And we're going to create the base. So the radius of this cylinder will be 10 units the height will be 1 and the axis divisions will be 8 and this will create an octagon okay so this unit has 8 faceted sides and that looks somehow thicker than it should be right out of the gate here that's funky it seems to be two units thick instead of one. I think I got a height of two in there. That's what it should look like. Okay. You know what? I don't think I reset settings. Create polygon cylinder. Yeah. Edit reset settings. That's what happens. Radius of 10, height of 1, axis divisions of 20. Or maybe I just skipped the height. I don't know. So either way, as long as you've got that in there, you're fine. Let's move on. Um, this is going to be the base of the um, uh, temple. So you can select the base, and we can view this in wireframe mode. My personal um, preference is I usually have the orthographic views, top, front, and side in wireframe mode, and then I usually have the perspective view in shaded mode. And when we get into lighting, I'll probably turn on lighting in perspective view too. Um, so if that base is not already selected, uh, just select it. And you'll notice that um, when you create an object, it's centered on the origin. So if you want to call zero the ground, which for the purposes of this tutorial we're going to call zero the ground, um, it's actually embedded in the ground by half a unit. So to fix that, you actually want to move it up by half a unit. Now you're probably not going to get an exact half unit with the mouse. so. What I would do is I would go up to translate Y and translate it 0.5 on the Y axis numerically. And now this is resting on the ground. 
So now we're going to rotate it. And I want to rotate the base 22.5 degrees. So again, um, in the top view here, I'm rotating on the rotate Y axis. Uh, I can probably get it pretty close to 22.5, but I'm probably not going to get exactly 22.5. So I want to go into the rotate Y and type in, um, this could be either positive or negative, 22.5 or negative 22.5. Either one is fine. And that flushes the edges of the pedestal octagon with our um, axial coordinates. Also, looks like the Umbrella Corporation logo. And once again, uh, to reiterate, it's always important to rename your objects. Um, we're going to call this object Temple Base instead of Cylinder. Cylinder does not help us very much. And now I'm going to do a duplicate uh, that is called uh, Duplicate Special. And I want to go into the option box. So the Duplicate Special lets us do quite a few things with the duplicate. So I'm going to do an Edit Reset Settings to start off. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a number of copies that each have some kind of change in each step. So uh, for this one um, we're going to create a translation of one in the y-axis. Remember anytime you see these three boxes like translate, rotate, and scale and then it just says three boxes it always goes x, y, z. So this is x, y, z. I want to translate it up a little bit with each um, copy. So I'm going to translate it one unit in the y-axis, so plus one. That means each copy that gets made will be moved one unit in the y-axis, so it'll be moved up one exactly on top of this pedestal. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit in the x and z-axis. I don't want it to get shorter, but I want it to create steps. So each step should be the same height, but they should be a little bit more um, narrow. So 0 0.9, 0 0.9 with each X and Z, 0.9. Uh, geometry type should be on copy, not instance. In most cases, your geometry type is going to be a copy. And this will create, we'll do a duplicate special, and that creates one object on top of the other one that you just made. It's been scaled down by 0.9 per, um, units in the X and Z axis but it is, we didn't scale it down in the Y, so it's still one unit tall. Unless, that's weird. I seem to have lost my translation. I don't know how that happened. 0.5. The translation on this one will be 1.5. Strange. Okay, well, I'm going to roll with it. So you could do a series of these. Um, we're just going to do two, but this can keep going um, just by continuing the duplicate special. You can keep creating more and more steps. And you can see how they, they move up one unit each time, and they size down a little bit. So, so there's your steps, basically. Now we're going to um, create the columns, and I'm going to start with just the pedestal. Let's go to 
create, and we don't have to rename the duplicate, by the way, it just inherits the name from what we duplicated and just changes it to tempo base one so that um, it doesn't conflict with the, with the tempo base. Um, so that's fine. So let's go to create polygon primitives. Whoops. Create polygon primitives cube and I think we want the option box yeah option box edit reset settings always the height and width are going to be 1.75 no I'm sorry width and depth the height is going to be 0.6 just like this leave all the other options at the default and click create In the side view, move the cube up on the y-axis so that it rests on top of the top step of the pedestal. Now, um, again, to reiterate, you're probably not going to get it. I got it really close. You're probably not going to get exactly 2.3, so you might want to just type in 2.3. And let's rename this column pedestal. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and create a column shaft. I'm going to create polygon primitive cylinder option box. And as always, edit reset settings. And for the radius, I'm going to choose 0 0.5. The height will be 6 units. The axis divisions will be 12. And then you can go ahead and create And to move this up, I can enter a translate Y value in the channel box of 5.6. And we'll rename P cylinder 2, we'll rename that column shaft. Now we need to create the capital. So let's select the polygon um, base of the uh, pedestal, so column pedestal, and we'll do an edit, duplicate special option box, and do edit reset settings. And we'll do a 6.6 .6 unit translate up and we're going to do a slight scale change, 0.8, oops, I'm on rotation, right here, 0.8 scale in the X and 0.8 scale in the Z, just to, we don't want it shorter, but we want it a little bit more narrow. So click Duplicate Special, and that will put our capital right on top there. Now let's select that name and call it Column Capital. So for the base, we can create a half sphere and have it rest on um, on the bottom and that'll give us kind of a rounded base for it to sit on. So let's do create NURBS primitives sphere option box edit reset settings and for the end sweep angle we want that to be 180. That'll give us half a sphere instead of a whole sphere. And we're going to do a little bit smaller radius, 0.75. Create. Um, and that needs to be rotated negative 90 degrees on the, I believe it's on the X. 
Oops, that was translate, not rotate. It's like, whoa, it disappeared. <laughs> That'll happen. So the dome should be pointing up. And then we can move it up to rest on the pedestal. Um, for that one, uh, I'm just going to eyeball it, but I'm going to let it embed into the pedestal just a tiny bit. Can you see that it's just a tiny bit below there? Let me see if I can zoom in. So it's just the slightest bit embedded. It Probably 2.6 would be exact. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make it like 2.59. And then I'm going to use the, whoops, sorry, okay, and then I'm going to use the scale tool and just squash it down a tad, just like that. And we're going to rename the, the sphere column base. And we're going to select those objects. You can draw a marquee around it or use any selection you like. And we're going to press Control G to group them. And this will become column. Simple as that. And let me get my outliner open so that I don't accidentally select something incorrectly. I seem to still have a cylinder in here somewhere. I'm going to delete that. That should be just a stray cylinder because that wasn't named. I think I named everything. So Okay, so um, I'm going to do Shift F to frame all. And I'm going to position, I'm actually going to have to zoom out on the top view a little bit. I'm going to turn on my move tool and position the column in the front left corner. Of the temple, so about there. And then you can press Control D to duplicate and take the other column and move it so that it's about symmetrical. Ancient temples uh, were almost always symmetrical, if not 100% close to it. So I want to now select both of these groups and group them as one. Uh, there's a couple reasons I want to do that. Um, for one, I can move the two pedestals as a unit um, because they go together. But also it's going to help us to do a duplicate special um, that will quickly just uh, rotate around the central axis. Uh, if we do it now, the way the columns are, the rotation won't work properly. They would just rotate amongst themselves. So what we want instead, if you um, select that second column group, not the children, just the hierarchy, um, you can also use this up here to select hierarchies. We've, these are the different levels of selection. So it's component, that's the 
most minute level, and then there's op full objects, and then there's hierarchy. Hierarchy mode, if I've got that on when I click on something, it will just select the group. So if you want to do it that way, you can, you can use this as well. Um, the hierarchy mode, I can shift select the other group, and it's only selecting the groups. It's not selecting all the subcomponents. So I want to take column and column one, the top node, and press control G again to group them together. And we'll just call this columns. Now when I rotate it, it's going to rotate around the center, the origin, because the, um, the two groups, the, the two hierarchies came together and reset to the center. And that's part of um, what we need so that when I rotate it 90 degrees, it'll land right here. And that's where the copy will be. So I'll show you what I mean. Click Edit, Duplicate Special Option Box, and Edit, Reset Settings. And for the rotate, we're going to do a 90 degree rotation on the Y axis. And we're going to do three copies, not four. You're doing, you have one already, so you need three more. And click Duplicate Special and they've got this lovely symmetrical um, series of columns. So that works really well. Um, if it's Greek, they'll probably be in a line, in which case you can just use uh, the duplicate special that you saw before with a little bit of translation on each one, you know, or, um, you know, from there you should be able to figure it out. So those are just a few of the different options. Uh, let's go ahead. I haven't saved this yet. Probably should have saved it sooner, but let's just go ahead and save it. I'm going to call it um, My Name Temple Tutorial. I recommend saving as Maya ASCII. Save as. Okay, we're going to finish this temple up with what they call an entablature and the domed roof. To create the entablature, we're going to create a torus. So go to Create, NURBS Primitive, Torus, Option Box. And let's do a Reset Settings. And for the Radius, I am going to make that 8.5. And Number of Sections is going to be 24. Let me expand this window a little bit. There's the Number of Sections. And that's going to give us a bit of an increased resolution. And this is going to have to go up again, so I'm going to translate it on the z-axis. I'm sorry, y. 9.7 units. Uh, I'm going to press Shift-F to frame the entablature in, in the um, view. I'm going to rename NURBS Taurus Entablature. And I want to go to component mode, uh, control vertex, and just select all of the top control vertices. Where are my control vertices? Okay, let's try that again. There we go. And just drag a marquee along the top row of vertices and move them up just a tad and that's going to make the um, the entablature look like this. Now let's create the domed roof. I am going to create NURBS Primitives Sphere Option Box I'm going to edit reset settings and the end sweep angle will be 180 radius will be 8.75 
Now we're going to rotate it negative 90 degrees on the x-axis so that it's pointing up. And then I'm going to move it up so that it's, again, just embedded slightly, slightly embedded in the entablature. And now turn on the, the um, scale tool or press R and we're going to just bring that down a touch and that finishes our temple. So um, let's put a few surfaces on this just to reiterate the, the use of surfaces. Again, you only have to use uh, colors at this point. So um, all I'm going to do is uh, I need to be in object mode and I'm going to right click on assign new material on the dome and I'm going to make that a blin material. And this will be, sometimes it doesn't put you right in the tab for some reason if there's a few other nodes to navigate through, but it'll be there. So there's the, there's the blin that I just created. I'm going to call this dome, and I'm going to make it blue. And again, Let's dial that blue down a couple notches. And I'm going to take the diffuse down just a little bit. Bring the eccentricity down a bit. Bring the specular roll off up a little bit. And specular color, I'm going to click on that and change that color a little bit to maybe a bright blue. Maybe just a little hint of blue, not much. And reflectivity doesn't matter because we're not turning on reflective. Okay, now I want to select, um, I'm just going to select the columns I will assign new material and this will be Fong and I'm going to make this an off-white kind of marble color again it's kind of an ivory color I'm going to increase the diffuse to 1 I'm going to increase the cosine power and increase the specular color. And maybe brighten up that white just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to select the stone pedestals and I'm going to make a stone type of material. Right click, assign new material. A stone does not have any kind of reflections or highlights on it. It's just a matte material, so again, for matte, we want Lambert. And this could almost just be whatever color you want it to be. I'm going to make it just kind of a somewhat dingy gray color. And that'll be fine. And then I'll select, last but not least, the entablature. Right-click, assign new material. And I'm going to make a gold entablature. So I'm going to use Blin, which is good for metals. And I'm going to do just a basic gold here. Something in the deep yellow range. We're going to bring the diffuse down quite a bit. Somewhere around 0.1 to 0.2. Maybe 0.3 at the most. Uh, eccentricity, we're going to make that low. Specular roll-off, we're going to make that high to increase the specular highlight. And then this part's important, the specular color. We can grab that gold color and I just need it to be brighter. So I'm going to go up a couple levels in hue and just max out the saturation and brightness. So right in the corner there for those highlights. And you've got a nice gold lining there. I think I left that as blend too. I need to name that gold. 
And let me double check the stone. I might have left that as, yep, Lambert 2. Let's name that stone. Fong 1. I left as Fong 1. Let's name that marble. And this is dome. Okay, cool. So save that. Um, this isn't your homework. This is uh, to give you an idea of how to do your homework. So read the assignment instructions carefully, and you should have all the information you need to make a great temple. Have fun with it.